So this was friggin' intense. Um, right. And or season one, episode six, thoughts. This episode is called The Eye. So, yeah, another episode I love everything about. I um, really love seeing a more serious Star Wars show after several somewhat lighter. Same as how Werewolf by Night was, at least in some ways, more dark than the last several MCU movies and MCU Disney Plus shows. And I, yeah, so, you know, Baby Call Marks justifies using mercenaries. I, I really quite like, you know, yeah. Because it is this thing of, he, you know, he can't pretend that Cassian is a rebel anymore. That would be disingenuous. But, this, you know, he, yeah, it's a, it doesn't feel like just rationalization. He actually, it, it makes sense what he says, you know. And we have an Imperial officer talking about how easy it is to wield power over the Donnies. He sounds like a white supremacist talking about how natural it is to ens enslave black people. The Eye, you're in for a treat. He's happy to enjoy the natural beauty of Aldani whilst exploiting the people. He doesn't think that he should offer anything in return. I literally sighed a breath of relief when they finally got radio contact after several seconds of struggling. And I, I like, you know, we find out that one of them is an ex-stormtrooper, you know, the, the, yeah, and, you know, he likes to give orders. It's, it's a great, and, you know, Skeen said, you should have been here when Cinta found out her whole family was killed by him, yeah. And since and Vel travel down the outside of the facility, it looks like mountain flossing, which, let's be honest, is repelling. And we see the pilgrims burn the gift fur. I have to admit, I thought there might, that, that it would, that there would end up being some kind of, I kind of thought that they might attack some of the guards. I even feared that they might attack some of the, you know, some of the rebels in disguise as guards, but, you know, and, and we do see, you know, that one of them had tears, you know, over the, the beauty of the eye, and, yeah, I guess the, maybe what they're doing with that in, in the show is saying, you know, even these people who are being taken advantage of, they haven't given up, they still have some, some, some spirit left, you know, their spirit hasn't been crushed. And, yeah, the plan was a hostage situation, which could very easily go wrong. And, yeah, like, the, the yeah, it, it does indeed end up going. I, I really, I felt like this episode, from start to finish, was just, we are terrified that, like, there's, there are so many things that could go wrong, you know. I also, I thought that maybe the, the kid would, like, you know, we, we were told that he might be sick, and yet he's forced to go to this. I thought, you know, maybe he would, like, pass out or something, uh, you know, and that would upset things, but I guess it was just, uh, yeah, you know, and, and yeah, even from that little, we see, you know, he he's like, C come help me with this, with, with the belt, you know, and, and his wife, you know, the boy's mother is like, I'm, I'm dressing your son, you know, and he's like, he's 12, he can dress himself. But you can't? You know, so so just, yeah. And, you know, the kid says, I, I feel sick. And, you know, the mother, you know, does the, the thing. And she's like, he has a temperature. He might actually have a fever, you know. And he's like, just, you know. And, and he says, everybody will be on their best behavior tonight. And the mother snipes with a, I'm looking forward to seeing that. <laughs> it would be new for you to be on your best behavior. So, yeah, but... Even in that brief, like, you see, this man legitimately does not, like, he doesn't even have empathy for his own family. He doesn't, you know, he clearly doesn't care if his son is sick, and the way he talks to his wife is also really disrespectful, so just, yeah. And they get to the area with a bunch of soldiers. I think it's Skeen who's like, everybody be cool, this is a rubbery, and if any of you pricks move, I'll execute every last one of you. I know, it's not the same without the F-bombs and MF-bomb, but, you know, the show is not, 
yeah, I try to keep that kind of language out of my videos for things that are okay to show for, for teenagers. And Yeah, anyway. And they use the troops to move the valuables from the vault onto the ship. Very clever. I have to admit, when I saw how big, you know... But, but yeah, Skeen said, anybody... Anybody who doesn't want to spend the next 10, min 10 minutes hustling, raise your hand. <laughs> if you raise your hand, I shoot you. You know, so, so yeah, that's, that's a very, very clever and, you know, does make sense that, you know, what, what did they say it was like for, uh, 80, 80 million, I think they ended up saying that the whole thing was total and... Yeah, you know, makes a lot of sense for that to be in this. I mean, I guess it's not technically old because this is not our Star Wars is not the same galaxy as ours. I find it frustrating when people try to, you know, snap, you know, to try to make pretzels out of logic, trying to justify. No, no, no. It is. It's that's the most boring way to look at the Star Wars galaxy is that it's just our galaxy, just far away and long ago. Anyway. It's a completely different galaxy, so I guess this is the Star Wars equivalent to gold, rather than what we know as as gold. But yeah, you know, it, and and I feel like I've heard that gold, like it's just because we think that it's pretty. It's like with diamonds and and stuff like that. It's not actually valuable in and of itself. So yeah, basically, if if you know one accepts that, you know, I, f I forget if it's a if it's a theory or a scientific theory or what exactly, but yeah, if one accepts that as true, then the Empire also thinks that, you know, they like gold, and yeah, I believe that, I 100% believe, because like, the people who used to, you know, the, the people who said, oh, gold is definitely valuable, I forget the exact, but I feel like those were probably colonizers, so yeah, makes perfect sense that they would, yeah. And one of the, you know, Imperial people who were dealing with the radio, they got to the radio frequency that the, the rebels are using, so they realized there's indeed foul play. It's not just the eye cutting off the radio. What's going on with that radio? And that's just like, holy crap, I, I couldn't believe how, just, yeah. And, and you know, you see Cinta... I have to admit, I thought that she was maybe going to, uh, what's the word? I, th I thought that she was, like, going to respond on the radio and say that that was a mistake. Uh, there's nothing, but, I mean, they would probably ask her for some kind of information that she doesn't have and, that, you know, some, some kind of uh, confirmation code that they would tell the radio people, but that someone taking hostages would not know so yeah and yeah she by the end of the episode she's standing and, and watching them fly away and watching seeing the beauty of the eye and let's see. but we'll miss the eye priorities and the eye is legitimately stunning looking and the guy in charge realizes Gorn is in on it. And I really love their little exchange there with, you know, you'll hang for this. Seven years working for you, I deserve much worse. <laughs> That's a, yeah. You know, the the other guy's like, oh, we're, you're going to pay. And, and Gorn is like, yeah, that is definitely what should happen here. So, yeah, that's, you're you're not intimidating me at all dude. I have to admit, I, I couldn't help but worry that Gorn would at some point, like, it would turn out that he was going to betray the rebels, and he would, like, say to the Imperial officer, to the other Imperial officers, I helped stop rebels steal from the, you know, yeah, I was really relieved that that wasn't the, yeah. And we see multiple TIE fighters readying this is a class. Oh, that might have been. Yeah, I think that maybe happens. After anyway, some of these might be out of order. This is a classified mission, and you're not clear to be here. Very clever thinking, Gord. That was legitimately like 
Because, yeah, you know, if he's like, oh, uh, run, you know, obviously the guy is going to know. But, yeah, if he keeps playing uh, uh, officer, if he keeps pulling rank, you know, the guy might actually be like, oh, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, classified mission, you know, so, yeah. And, and the commander has a heart attack. Let's see. And yeah, and we see the the um, the pilots going into the Tie Fighters and the Tie Fighters flying out to it, and and we know how close they are because we've seen you know I di I didn't even think about that the other t we've seen uh, at least two flyovers possibly three and yeah that's the show that's the showrunners you know reminding us the airbase is very close. If they end up with TIE Fighters flying after them, there's they have almost no head start, and they are much slower. So just, yeah, that's, uh, that's, yeah. And amazing firefight. I just, there's so many elements of this thing, you know. Nemec ends up, he's, he's on the ship, but they're not able to get... I f I'm afraid I forget his name, but the ex-stormtrooper, you know, he, yeah, ends up being shot, and Skeen has to cover, and it's like, you know, you can tell he is freaking terrified, you know, and, and also, uh, when was it, ah, crap, I forget exactly when, but Vel was really terrified, oh, that's right, that's before the, um, that was with Cinta, Right before she, you know, the the response with the, the the radio, you know, and it's that thing of like, I mean, we've never seen her that afraid before, so that means that things are getting serious, and also kind of like with Senta, you know, um, I have to admit, I I didn't pick up on this, but apparently, Vel and Senta are you know a, a lesbian couple, and and that's great. I I really. More representation in Star Wars, please. This has always been a franchise that's all about the little guy, about the people that, like, powerful people step on. So, just, yeah. Uh, the, uh, let's see, yeah, the, the you know, the, the ex-Stormtrooper runs as one of the, you know, there's some cover, but there's still, I think he's the one who still gets shot to spot the cover. And you got, like, Vel, like, she... Uh, I think, she, yeah, she's struggling to hit the, the trooper, or, the, yeah, the, the soldier himself. That's actually, yeah, I really like that these are not stormtroopers, because every single one of them, you can see their face, and you can see the, the emotion on their face, you know, during the, the entire shootout. So I really appreciate it. And, and I do also realize, you know, they wouldn't have stormtroopers. This is not that kind of place. You know, they don't need stormtroopers for, for this kind of place. But, but yeah, the, the, you know, Val is struggling to hit the, the stormtrooper. So instead she shoots this, this canister underneath, you know, not, not, not that he's standing on it, but it's like in front of the, you know, there were railings in this. Is this the first time we've seen railings in, in, like, live-action Star Wars? I think it might be. I, I feel like everywhere, everywhere else doesn't have railings. But yeah, the, you know, under, in, there's a railing in front of him, and, and right in front of the railing, there's this canister. She shoots it, and smoke or, or steam or something comes out. And it makes it harder for him to see, which is a very clever, because he can't cover that thing, you know, he can, he can try to take cover himself, so that's, just love the, the, you know, throughout this whole thing, so much guerrilla warfare kind of, kind of stuff, just, yeah, and, and the, the, so yeah, both the firefight and the flight afterwards, tense, suspenseful, absolutely love it, and just the, the flight, and you see the, the TIE fighters, and you're like, how are they going to get out of this, and, you know, the, the kid comes through, despite, you know, he can't feel his legs, he is badly, you know, I don't care what galaxy you're from, if you can't feel your legs, and you used to, that's a bad sign, so, you know, they give him this pain, and that's also the thing, you know, like, the gas scene is in the front, and he's like, I need some numbers. I need to know where we're going. But if the other, you know, there's only, 
there's only three other people, and one of them's injured. The other two have to get him, you know. Neither Ski nor Vel could get Nemec away from there without, just, so, so yeah, you know. And they gotta give him a painkiller, because, you know, yeah. And, and he's like, I think, does he say, rise. Rise? What did you give him? You know, and just, and they do rise, and, and you know, and the dive, dive, and, and the TIE fighters blow up from the, just, yeah. And, and, you know, Nemec coming through, and the TIE Fighter computers, they can't keep up. The one that Nemec had could keep up, which is what we were told before this episode. You know, once you're in the eye, you know, almost no... Or, or is it just that Empire Standard Radio? Because that's the thing, you know, they don't they don't have to improve. They, they have confidence in the things that they have. And just, yeah, so tense. And then, you know, the skein is like, she doesn't want to take him to a doctor. She she thinks it'll derail the mission, you know. And Cassian is like, how do we get to the doctor, you know, and smash cut in the doctor. And then we find out that maybe they were just looking to escape, you know, and Val trusts Skeen too much. She's in there with the doctor, with Nemec. And, and I feel, have we seen the doctor's species before? And maybe it was animation instead of live action, but it, yeah, you know, great detail because you know he's got these these glasses that really improve his vision. He's got four arms. These are logical things to have for a doctor, you know. So just yeah, and yeah, Skeen tells Cassian together they can betray the rest. That's forty mil for each, and you know Cassian's like, what about your brother? I have no brother, and it's, you know he knew to tell that lie to make the others trust him. You know that Vel trusted him so much that she left him and Cassian alone. And you know Skeen does make the mistake of telling Cassian where they could go. You know this is where I want you to fly us, and Cassian shoots him, and he's presumably heading there. But he does have enough honor to leave Vel the ship and all its riches, except his pay. He doesn't want to be. He doesn't you know, want to keep being a rebel, but he does accept the manifesto, and that is, like, he still has a long way to go before he is who we see him as in Rogue One, so so that's really cool. I, I, we, there has been too much of this stuff where, like, you know, character arc, character plateau, kind of just, you know, he is getting a proper character arc. That is, uh, yeah, really love to see that. And, yeah, and, and the thing with, like, you know, he comes in holding the, the I want to say it's called a Briar Blaster Pistol, and I, I swear, if they actually make, if they actually put Kyle Katarn into Star Wars, that would be so awesome. Holy crap. I, yeah, just seriously. So, the, the... Yeah, you know he's he's got the the blaster rifle, and the doctor's like, you know, no, those and and Vel is like, it's not you, Doc. You know, he's aiming at me. He, I'm the one that he's, you know, and and Cassian is like, and it's not what you think. And Vel is like, surprise, you know, just absolutely love these, yeah. And we see the Senate and the ISB, these chaotic reactions, and I, you know, 100%, the, the ISB lady who's trying to climb the ladder, she is going to be all over the, the whole, you know, I don't know if she's going to get to investigate this, maybe she'll get, she'll go and investigate some of the others, and come back and be like, see, this connects the, the attack on Aldani to the other ones that I had shown, you know, and we end on Luthen relieved, but also nervous. And you know, the guy who told him about the rebel attack didn't have any clue that Luthen had anything to do with it. You know, it's just I was kidding. You know, he's like, eh, you know, did you did you see this in the in the news, the Star Wars Galaxy equivalent of a newspaper? That's yeah. And as always, make sure you watch Jesse Gender's video on this episode. So just wow, I am. This is this is the best Star Wars thing that we've had in a very long time. I feel that this really helps. What's the word? Um, 
Ah, crap. But yeah, um, it, you know, this helps really prove that Disney Star Wars can be amazing. Uh, you know, I, I really don't think that it's very realistic to say that it never will be. I understand being disappointed with some of their outputs thus far, but this really is, it, it, you know, just, yeah. And this is, holy crap, this was so tense and suspenseful and I watch horror movies so this is not like I'm I'm not so you know I'm I'm gonna be yeah the the um, I'm watching yeah yeah I don't want to jinx it let's see is there anything that I watched recently I'm gonna yeah you know some of my favorite movies are The Thing from 1982 and The Fly from 1986. I have seen, you know, tension and suspense before. I am not, you know, I'm used to. But but this is the first time in a long time that I've seen something new other than fresh. That was also one where I really, holy crap, that was just, yeah. Well, it's, uh, um... Felt it in the pit of my stomach, I think is the, the saying, you know, but but this is the first time in a long time where it's been science fiction that has had me th this tense. N new, yeah, a new piece of science fiction. So, actually, yeah, I guess if I had, since I did just watch Werewolf by Night, overall I would say this was even more tense and suspenseful, and that is, that is saying a lot, but, yeah, and, and just, yeah amazing episode and it it does kind of look like it will be these this thing of you know every th uh, every third episode will be like a culmination of a story arc and the two episodes leading up to it will really build up that story i'm i'm really really glad they're not trying to do this and episode 3 every single episode that would get just exhausting you know but as a, and, and it wouldn't have the same impact. The fact that there are two episodes of build-up before this kind of thing, I I guess that maybe was why, you know, they released three episodes, the first three episodes, instead of only one episode, at, at the ver as, as the premiere, yeah, that probably was, like, they were, they were, uh, what's the word? You know, ba basically to, to tell people, don't worry, there will be conclusions to, you know, and, and it is kind of like Mandalorian tends to resolve yeah, you know, yeah Mandalorian tends to resolve in the, the story that it sets up either the same episode or, you know there's, there's some ongoing story stuff sure, but a lot of the episodes are basically self-contained so and let's see the yeah, and then you have stuff like The Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan, which I acknowledge they definitely have their strengths, but, you know, it kind of felt like they were they were stretching because they had a certain amount of episodes, to, you know, and this really doesn't feel like that at all. Uh, I really feel like, you know, we're, we're in a... Yeah, we're, we're in a different place. Uh, you know, uh, Cassian himself has not... You know, he's still very, very reluctant to join a rebellion. But it was like, you know, he, uh, him, him working, him working with a group was outside of his comfort zone based on the first three episodes. You know, he really did not like this whole, you know, and yeah, I mean, we know where he, we know that he ends up being a really devoted rebel, but the... Ah, what's the word? We don't really... Yeah, we, we we don't know yet how he'll he'll get there and this whole... So, so yeah, um, really, really cool. I... I think basically everything in this episode was a surprise to me. I, I think... I guess the only thing... Yeah. I had, you know, I, I figured Nemec would probably end up dying, and the, ah, what's the word? 
uh, you know, obviously we knew that Andor would, would make it. Yeah, I mean, I honestly wasn't even entirely sure if they were going to succeed in the mission or not. And then at the end of the episode, I literally was like, I don't know, maybe Skeen will convince Cassian and they'll fly off with all the, but just, yeah. So that was, that really was, you know, he was sitting there, like he, he, and or was basically just hoping if Skeen just tells me where I can hide out, then I can, you know, let Vel, I, I can shoot Skeen, tell Vel that he was going to betray them, and this whole, yeah. And, you know, it, again, we have this thing of, like, yeah, in, in several of these episodes, Skeen really did think that Cassian was as ruthless as he himself was. He really did think, here is someone that, you know, we, we just need, we just need a situation where it's just the two of us so that I can tell him the plan and then we'll, we'll leave and, you know, and, you know, yeah, part, part of him being, you know, that, yeah, that is also the thing. This episode does show, you know, Cassian, I mean, he did, like he said, he gave his word that he was going to help with the mission, and him, you know, running off with the loot would be sabotaging the mission, so, you know, and, and, yeah, Skeen was further down that dark path, and, and, yeah, they're, they're basically, they're contrasting the two, you know, here. We, we see that, you know, Cassian, yeah, he keeps his word, and, and yeah, Skeen knew this is actually the, the, um, ah, right, Skeen knew to tell them the lie so that they would believe it because they could see themselves in that. They're like, you know, I, you know, I'm not sure all of them have people like family members or friends or such that were killed necessarily, but certainly they know some, otherwise they wouldn't be they wouldn't be doing the the rebellion, you know. Why would they? You know, it's it's a it's it seems basically impossible. So the only reason you would do that is if you have a good a strong personal reason to. Or like Skeen, you see a way to make some money, you know. Yeah, I mean, I I've just amazed, and and it's one of those twists. It doesn't go against the other things that he's said and done. All the while, he was pretending to be like super rebel. You know, the, he's gonna he's gonna make sure that Nemec doesn't fall asleep at the post. He's gonna make sure that um, Cassian doesn't have some kind. Of, that whole the whole thing was an act. When he said, "Look, he's a you know he there's something going on here." That was so that one of the others wouldn't notice it and be the... Yeah. Also, Skeen probably figured there's some chance that he's not... He, he's going to sabotage the mission in a way that I don't get paid. And the... the Yeah, just so, so... Absolutely love this. I am really looking forward to... A week from now, getting another episode, and just, holy crap, just, yeah, um, yeah, loving it, absolutely loving it. So, I will be doing a couple more videos before this week is over, and so, yeah, hope to see you there, or, if not, catch you next week.